When I first met Gabriella, she was a premature baby, born at 34 weeks of gestation. And they started feeding her, and then on day of life two, she started developing um, early signs of necrotizing alkalias, a very serious uh, gastrointestinal condition. About five o'clock in the morning, they called and said, you need to get down here right away because it's not looking good and we probably have to transfer her to Loma Melinda. She just looked, she didn't look like a preemie anymore. She looked like a giant baby because she was so swollen. IVs everywhere, wires, tubes, it was just, it was just, it, it was almost unreal how, how bad she looked. Dr. Well, Radulescu was already there in the hallway waiting for us. Dr. Radulescu and the whole team? And the whole team, yeah. And as soon and as we got there, he just said, we need to take her to emergency surgery now. Otherwise, she's going to die. And I said, well, go, go. <laughs> and he said, well, I have to explain some things to you first. And I told her that usually premature babies, um, they're affected by this condition, have an extremely high mortality. 50% of the uh, babies that come in the hospital with this condition um, do not make it. Um, I just said, do anything you can to save her life. Operating on, on babies is challenging and, and even harder in premature babies. Gabriella was this big. Basically, your two hands together would be the entire length of her body. Babies that are premature have a very low biological reserve, so they can crash very quickly. The risks are extremely high. You cannot take your time and be in the operating room. You have to be quick, meticulous, radical, and effective. Necrotizing enterocolitis, or NEC, is a devastating disease that spreads through the bowels of premature babies and kills their intestines. My number one concern with going back to the operating room with Gabriella was how much of the intestine you resect. If Dr. Redalescu removes too much of the intestines, Gabriella will have to be fed through an IV for the rest of her life. So every time you're in the operating room, you're trying to save as much intestine as possible. In Gabriella's case, Dr. Radulescu is forced to remove nearly half of her intestines. We opted to give her something called an ostomy, just an opening of the bowel to the skin level. The ostomy is a temporary fix that will allow Gabriella to eat and give doctors more time to reconnect her intestines. I was happy about the operation, but I knew that we're not out of the woods yet. And I told them that Gabriella might die in the next couple of days. Even if you remove the piece of bowel, the rest of the gut can die too. And then usually when that happens, then the babies don't make it. We seen her and she just looked real, real bad. She had this ventilator that was forcing air inside her lungs that was making her vibrate. And she was swollen. And, and at the time, we didn't look like she was gonna make it. Gabriella is fighting for her life in the neonatal intensive care unit. We take turns going back and forth because we had the other kids, of course, to watch. If it wasn't him, it was I, in the middle of the night, we'd be there. The first couple of days, um, right after surgery, she gained about two times her body weight, just in terms of fluids and blood transfusions, and um, she was very, very sick. And the, the worst part about it is you see your baby there, and at the time, I had never held her yet because she was in the incubator. She was in such bad shape, they didn't want us to hold her. So it was so hard for me to be there watching her and seeing that she was like trying to cry, but she couldn't because she had everything going on and I couldn't even hold her to comfort her. It's just very stressful because you don't know where, where you stand or where you're at or, mm -hmm. or if she's even gonna get out of there. You know? Every day in the NICU is very straining. It's, it's looking at all these babies sick, but mostly your own. You're looking at your own and you're thinking, dang, like, why is she here? She should be home with me and my family already. She would be swollen <laughs> one day, unrecognizable, and then the next day she would she would look like our baby, and then it was just seen her in a lot of different ways. It was just very, very hard. Jude and Maggie, her older brother and sister, got to come and see Gabby for the first time. They stood at her bedside, and they stood up on the little chairs, and they, they said, okay, they, I guess they'd practice this prayer, and they said, dear Lord, if my sister gets lost, could you find her? And if she climbed up a tree, don't let her fall out. And we know that um, she's very sick, and if you need to take her, you can, but we really want her to stay with us. And that's coming from a four-year-old. They didn't get coached into nothing or nothing. He just came up with a prayer on his own. And, and all, we had the nurses crying. Everybody was crying because it was just like the sweetest thing, the most raw thing for somebody, for a little four-year-old to say that prayer to her or to God. Yeah. Good morning. Yeah.
Hi. Gabriella has been in the NICU for 75 days. The colon goes, normally goes like this, up, across, and down. She does not have this portion. She does not have that portion. She still has a small bowel here. From the small bowel, I can connect the small bowel right here and restore her GI integrity. But given that the contrast is not traveled that far off, it tends me to believe that this is probably unusable. And as for long-term um, things, would it be like supplement taking or something no. like that? Or Once she overcomes this, she's good for life. So that's the plan. And hopefully you guys can get out of here in about two days or so. And I'm so um, excited. I, I, I can't even like wait. I can't imagine just taking her outside. That's going to be the most awesome thing. She's been in the hospital for 75 days now. And uh, the first couple of days after surgery um, were very hard on her. Um, and I told mom about 40 hours, hours after the surgery that we still have a 50% chance of losing her at that point. But I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm overly excited that she's able to go home. She's gonna need one more surgery going forward, but this is nothing compared to what she went through. So um, again, not a lot of babies are fortunate like this to go home. Yeah, and one day I, after they took out the respirator, I walked right up to her crib and said, where's my baby? And they said, that's her. And I was like, she looked like a brand new baby. She was just transformed. She wasn't swollen anymore. Her tubes were out of her mouth and it was just amazing. She just barely got her pick lines and IVs taken off last night, so now she's like down to one wire. And <laughs> it's so great. It's so great to be able to hold her like this. I don't know how she's going to sleep at home with no beeping and crying. It's Dr. Redalescu's hope that soon no baby will have to go through what Gabriella did. I have a research lab that focuses mainly on necrotizing and colitis to um, prevent neck from happening and to treat it. Our research is uh, focused on developing a cure uh, that can be given to babies who are at risk uh, before they're born. The results that we have so far are very exciting and I am extremely hopeful that uh, Loma Linda will be the place where this disease ends. There's one. There's two. Oh, are we wire free and happy? Yes, we are. I have no cords. I have no wires. She has no cords and nothing on her. Yay. You're a normal baby again. After 84 days in the NICU, Gabriella finally gets to go home. That is Maggie. This is Daddy. That is Mama. That's Gabriella. This is a fish. This is a nurse and doctor. Seeing Gabriella go home. I can't really describe that feeling to anybody. It's just, she'll be fine. It's a blessing to be able to have a healthy child at home. I live for that. Purple now, I'm going to color this rainbow. Okay, okay Maggie, could you use the green real quick? After here, this is a rainbow, and then shows purple and then pink. Okay, who's going to be lifted up first? Maggie first! Maggie first, 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 Maggie and such good people that actually have real, true, honest hearts still, that are willing to help people that they don't even know. You can't take babies to school. Yes, you could. Come along to school. No, but you, you, you don't My dream is to never have to operate for neck. But um, we're still far away from that.